Tom, the slogan for your campaign is ask for more. More what and who should be asking? All of us should be asking. All the citizens of the municipality should be asking. More from our politicians, more from City Hall, more from municipal services, more, uh, more from ourselves. In terms of what? What we can do for our municipality. What we can do collectively and what we can do individually in regards to the municipality and make it better. That's not what HRM can do for you? Sure. It's certainly easy to sit back and uh, you know, throw stones at other people for what they're not doing for you. Certainly if they're being paid to do things for you, they should do things for you. Yes. But uh, certainly, certainly the amount of community involvement uh, is necessary as well for everything to work, I would think. It has to be. The community has to be involved. The community has to take some level of ownership because with ownership comes pride. Right? And that is what I believe one of the, the things we're lacking right now is pride in this municipality uh, by a lot of the residents. Mm -hmm. and, and we can certainly get that back. And that, that's sort of the idea behind the Ask for More uh, slogan or campaign. But you were a, a police detective for quite a while. How many years were you uh, with the force? I was with the uh, police department for 50, or 30 years and I was in the homicide for 15. So understandably, uh, crime plays a large part in, in your platform. Did I see accurately that there are currently 57 unsolved murders in HRM? It seems like a lot to me. Is that? It is a lot. We're not, a, we're, not a, we're not a big, big city. How many homicides a year do we typically have? It fluctuates back and forth. It can go from um, half a dozen up to, was last year, we had uh, 17, but then that number somehow jumped to 19. Um, but what puts it in perspective for me is, is the fact that when we look at a city like um, London, Ontario, which is roughly our same size, if you look at their website, I think they had one or three outstanding homicides, I don't recall right off the top of my head, but around that number. Um, somewhere uh, like Calgary, three times our size of population. Um, we had more homicides in 2011 than Calgary did in 2010. So that, that, that gives you a little bit of a, a mindset in regards to the serious crime, the violent crime, there is a major issue there. Uh, 57 unsolved is, is not not satisfactory in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's, it's up to the people in the community. We talked a few seconds ago about mm -hmm. people having pride and people asking for more, not only more from their, from their government and from their elected officials, but also from themselves. That's part of it. I mean, it, it's said that one of the, the uh, greatest crimes of all is apathy. Now, we all know apathy is not a crime, but it is a big reason why the what? crime stats are the way they are. More of a misdemeanor. Kind of. What uh, prompted you to get involved in politics? I think um, a couple of reasons, um, namely two, to be short and sweet. One was frustration and the second was family. I'd been uh, very interested in politics for, for many years. Back in 2008, I was Sheila Fougier's campaign manager when she ran against uh, our present mayor. I just hit a point where you've had enough. You, 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 you are frustrated with the way things are going. We've had many, many instances of where um, there was a lack of leadership at City Hall, and as a result there were stumbles and there was falls. That affected all of us. Uh, the second reason is family. I have, two, I, have two, I have two adult children, and I'm, I'm very fortunate they both live here, but I also have two granddaughters, and ten, 10 and 2. And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, if we don't get in front of them at this point in time, if we don't provide opportunities for our, for our kids to stay here and to, and to uh, flourish and to grow and to work in the fields they want to work in, if we don't provide that, they're not going to stay. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that now. And so we've got we to gotta produce that in order for our children and our, and our youth to stay here. Right now, people are coming to Halifax from outside. They're getting educated at Dow or Smeal with them out, and they're gone as soon as they're finished. But we're also seeing that with a lot of our own kids, too. If you could cut through the red tape, bureaucracy, all the crap that would otherwise potentially stop this. What would you change in Halifax today if you could wave a magic wand? The transparency, the secrecy, the, the feeling of distrust between municipal government and the citizens, it has to be addressed and it, it would have to go away. There's a couple of things right now that are realities that not so much our generation is going to have to face, but the generation coming after us. And that's the fact that the price of oil, the price of gas, that's never ever going to go down. It's never going to go down. And we, as a municipality, have to come up with ways to provide public transportation, to get people on and off the peninsula, to get people moving freely throughout the municipality. 
in order to get them engaged, in order to get them downtown, in order to get them out to the rural areas. Any intention to pick up uh, the captain's hat and move ahead with the fast ferry to Bedford, or can, no. we, can we shelve that? I, I will not be going after any fast ferries anywhere. Uh, well, thanks for joining us today. Hopefully we'll see you on the, uh, on the show again uh, before the election. Anytime. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. Thank you.